Hello, this is Jared Nimi uh, with a short uh, mini lecture on some Monte Carlo integration. All right, so the idea behind Monte Carlo integration is that if you're trying to evaluate an integral of this form, so for those familiar with regular integrals, uh, the right side might look familiar, where you just have some integral over some domain of x. Uh, and here we split it up into two functions, a function h of x and f of x. <clears throat> for the moment, you could think of that as just a single function of x. Uh, we're going to cast it in uh, some a statistical notation here, where we actually are calculating the expectation under the density f of the function h of the random variable x. All right, so if we can write down the integral that we're trying to solve as the expectation of some function of a random variable, then what we can do is we can obtain a Monte Carlo estimate. So this Monte Carlo estimate is obtained by first sampling a whole bunch of realization from the distribution for f of x. Right, this might be a normal distribution, a uniform distribution, something of that nature. And so we're going to sample a bunch of values from this distribution, and then we're going to calculate the function h of all those values that we just randomly sampled. And we're going to take the average over all of those values of h. That is exactly what this estimate h sub j is, where the subscript here is indicating how many simulations we've taken. So capital J here is how many simulations we're taking. So basically, simulate from f, calculate h, h, take the average. And now we know a couple of pieces uh, from probability theory that are going to help us understand how good this Monte Carlo estimate is. The first thing that we know is that that Monte Carlo estimate converges almost surely to the quantity that we're trying to estimate due to the strong law of large numbers. The second thing that we know is that if h has a finite expectation under f, then we know that the, the Monte Carlo estimate that we're calculating converges in distribution to a normal distribution centered at the quantity that we're trying to estimate and with some variance vj. We're going to estimate this variance uh, using the, the empirical estimate of the variance of our h's and divide them by the number of samples we've taken. Often we refer to this as the standard error of the estimate. All right, and just to expand it further, here's at least one uh, estimate that we could use for our variance. All right, so this is Monte Carlo integration in a nutshell. I should mention that much of the presentation here is from uh, Costella and Berger in their section on Monte Carlo uh, integration which is section 3.2 in the second edition of their book. Again, it's Robert and Casella. I apologize if I said Casella and Berger. Robert and Casella. All right, so that's the fundamental idea behind Monte Carlo integration. And now I'm just going to present a couple examples to try to um, hammer the point home. So the first example is a standard uh, definite integral where we're integrating over some bound over some function. This presumably is very familiar to those who are familiar with integration. We might uh, approach this problem by, by uh, analytical techniques if we can. Uh, if we can't do analytical techniques, we might use something like Riemann integration or Lebesgue integration or something of that nature. Uh, but here we're going to use the Monte Carlo estimate. And so we could split this problem up into a couple of ways. But the way that we're going to do it here is we're going to set the function that's in the integrand there. That is going to be our h. So h here is this whole function e to the negative x squared over 2. And then we're going to set, there's nothing left in the integrand, so f must be 1. But this implies that x has a uniform distribution on the interval 0, 1. So this technique here is going to be a technique that you could use to solve any definite integral problem, where the bounds of the integral determine the bounds on your uniform sample right here. And then h just ends up being whatever value, whatever function you have in the integral. Okay, so if we go ahead and do this just uh, pictorially, here's what happens. All right, so on the left side, we've taken 10 samples. And on the right side, we've taken 100. The samples are indicated on the x-axis. Oh, going back and forth. The samples are indicated on the x-axis. Um, right here, values between 0 and 1 are the values that we're sampling for x. 
So at some point in the first 10 samples, we sampled this value right here, which is about 0.7, this value here that's or sorry, 0 0.07, this is 0.2, and so forth. And we have 10 of those samples, and all we do is calculate the function at those samples, and then we calculate the average. In, that case, in this case, it happened to be 0.832. Do the same thing for now 100 samples, and we can see that it's starting to fill the space of the domain here, of the 0 to 1, uh, and we get another estimate. And so now we can put this all together and look at what the convergence looks like in a Monte Carlo estimate. So now on the x-axis we have the number of samples that we've taken. On the y-axis we have our cumulative estimate of this integral. And so we can see that initially things are quite variable, but it starts to settle down. The dark black line is our estimate, and the dashed line is our 95% it's a confidence interval for that estimate, calculated using the central limit theorem uh, of the previous example. All right, and the red line here is then the truth. And so we can see that our Monte Carlo estimate does a decent job of estimating that truth. All right, in a slightly different uh, example, suppose we're interested now in, in, in evaluating this expectation which we can write as an integral in this fashion. Um, we're now we're trying to find the expectation of x, where x is a normally distributed random variable uh, with mean 0 and variance 1. For those who've taken uh, introductory statistics courses, you should know immediately what this value should be. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that this is another integral. Now it's over an infinite. The bounds here on the integral are infinite. So we cannot use our a uniform trick of trying to sample uniformly, which would now be on the whole real line. Um, and so now we need to split up the integral a bit differently. The convenient way to split up this integral is to take the second part here, which is the density of a normal distribution, and sample from that, and then evaluate the quantity x. Alright, so in terms of our notation before, h of x is just x, and f of x is the probability density function for a standard normal. Uh, so that just means that we sample x from a normal 0, 1, and we calculate x and take the average. And there we have it. Uh, at this point, I have not calculated the bounds uh, for our confidence intervals for our Monte Carlo estimate, but you could go ahead and do that. All right, so this was a, an alternative example here where we didn't sample from a uniform distribution, but we sampled from some other distribution. In summary now, I'd just like to show how to do this in R. So again, so suppose that you can write the problem in this format, the expectation under f of some function h of x. Well, in r, you could, provided that you have this r function, which is going to be some function that draws random variables from your function f. In this case, we're going to draw capital J of them, where we set j equal to 100. So we sample 100 values from f, calculate x for all those values, and we can get an estimate by taking the mean of those values. And now if we wanted the Monte Carlo uncertainty, we could go ahead and compute that. Here we have the estimate, plus or minus a value, this is for now a 95% uh, interval, where the standard deviation here that we multiplied by is the square root of the empirical variance, or h, divided by the number of samples we take. All right, so I hope you've I uh, enjoyed this quick introduction to Monte Carlo integration. Again, I suggest if you want more thorough understanding to go ahead and read Robert and Priscilla, uh, starting with section 3.2.